Whoever cares about the values that our children will live with more will get the privilege of defining them. Do you want them more than the enemies of freedom and family and God and America? Because if you don't, they will gladly take over the raising and discipling of your children for you. America is a frontier nation, and my friends at Trail Life embody these ideals. Our history is defined by pioneers, from pilgrims boldly crossing the ocean and carving colonies out of the wilderness for the sake of religious freedom, to those dauntless settlers who left their homes for the Western frontier. Some of my favorite memories are pioneering adventures with my own sons, hiking and camping in the mountains with a few friends, and having important conversations around the campfire about things that really matter. In trail life troops across the country, boys and men are engaging with their community, experiencing adventure, finding a brotherhood, and raising up a generation of future men prepared to act with courage and confidence, ready to engage with society in ways that will bring heart change and grow the kingdom. I want to encourage you to find or start a trail life troop in your church. Learn more at www.traillifecampfire.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the American Campfire Revival 2.0. We are um, uh, rebooting what we started a few years ago as we gathered together as the family of faith for 100 days. And we are uh, a little less than 100 days out from the election. And we're gathering again because our nation is at a cross crossroads. I love being outside. Uh, the, 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 the smell of the smoke, the heat of the fire, the starry night sky, I can hear the cicadas in the trees, and, and all of this just reminds me that this, this is our Father's world. He determines what happens. He is sovereign. Uh, his hand of providence is absolutely necessary for us to take our next breath. We are totally dependent upon Him for everything that we do, and every good thing that happens is only going to come when we line up with God's moral laws, his spiritual laws, and we get in step with the good things that he's doing in the world. So thank you for joining with me. I hope to pray with you tonight and talk through some more principles that I think will give you hope and help your, your faith to overcome your fears. This last couple of years, I've spent a lot of time reading children's books and uh, reading things that teach kids the fruit of the Spirit, like humility and love and kindness and gentleness, uh, faith in God and self-control. But it's interesting, I, I'm no longer continuing to pour fuel on the fire of a movement of reading wholesome children's books in public libraries. And it's not because I'm tired of it, it's not because I'm giving up, it's because I don't need to. Other parents have jumped in and said, wait a minute, I can do this. If I wanna see a society and a neighborhood where my children are hearing good stories about virtuous things and praying and, and, and singing songs of appreciation for our country, we can do that ourselves. And so parents and pastors and grandparents and community leaders have been gathering by the thousands in public libraries, in their local neighborhoods, at their own initiative, to read stories of virtue rooted in the scriptures, singing songs and praying together. This has been so encouraging to me and I'm so grateful. So for those of you who've been part of this army of compassion, looking to take back the future for our children, thank you for what you're doing. Now, maybe you may be thinking that, you know, reading kids' books in public libraries is not your thing. Maybe you haven't even been to a public library in a long time. Well, that's okay. But I do believe that God put you where you are and equipped you with certain talents and relationships and a sphere of influence and resources to be able to impact the world for good in a very specific way that is custom to who you are and where you are in your life with the abilities and the resources that you have to make the kind of difference that I can't make, that, that other people can't make, but that you can uniquely make. I want you to, to hear your brother's encouragement right now. You do not have to let the 
threatening Greta Thunberg scowl of radical progressivism paralyze you and shame you into a quiet corner where you keep all your values to yourself. Newsflash, whoever wants the future for our children, whoever wants the culture of tomorrow the most is going to get it. Whoever cares about the values that our children will live with more will get the privilege of defining them. Do you want them more than the enemies of freedom and family and God and America? Because if you don't, they will gladly take over the raising and discipling of your children for you. Now, it's true that sometimes stepping into the cultural fray and fighting the good fight will cost us. Sometimes it can be legitimately dangerous. But I have often found, as I've traveled the country over the last decade, that many of the threatenings of the enemy is a lot of bark and no bite. There's a lot of bluff, a lot of intimidation tactics to scare you. But I believe that if you and I pray to God to protect us, if we pray for him to put a hedge of protection around his children, that he wants and delights to do that, and that you and I can rest in the fact that providence favors the brave. Cowards, the scriptures say, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. God has given you a birthright of courage. Use it, lean into it, and live it out. What if God has taken this current cultural setback to use as a divine setup for a spiritual comeback, knowing that you are a faithful soldier in his army of bravery and compassion, and that you and I together linking arms and charging forward out of love for God and love for others will advance the kingdom in ways that have never been accomplished in the past. I believe that's exactly true. It's always true in every generation for every person. And all it takes is you and I putting complacency and cowardice behind us. If we do that, there's no reason that this awakening and revival cannot take place. The only question is, are we ready to take advantage of this comeback, this awakening in the United States of America. What will we do when masses of people discover that the promises of radical progressivism and socialism and secular humanism are empty and was a big fraud and actually results in bondage and tyranny and the loss of freedom and quality of life? and they turn back to God. Will you and I be prepared to lead them? Will you and I be prepared to show them the good way with hearts full of faith and hope and joy and courage? We need to, and that's why I wanna gather with you. I wanna give you the practical whys and the hows of how to prepare for this great big comeback and how to have courage in the face of opposition. That's why I wrote this book, Born to be Brave. You and I can be a part of the great things that I believe that God is doing. I believe with all of my heart. Are you ready? Are you brave enough to go there with me? I hope so. Let's join up with our family and friends over the next 100 days, every several days, and let's talk about these things. And let's pray together. Let's do that now. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this birthright of courage that you've given us. God, without you, we wouldn't even believe in you. Lord, you, you, you say that we are dead in our trespasses and in our sins. Lord, our nation is on the verge of becoming a corpse spiritually. God, we, we need you to tear open the heavens and send down your life-giving Holy Spirit and take these dry bones and put us back together again and fill us with your spirit. 
God, would you give us new life in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, and as a nation. Lord, give us courage and the desire to do what we know we ought to do. And we thank you for your, for your care for us and your nearness. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope to see you in a couple of days. Thanks for joining me again tonight. So appreciate you and all of your comments, praying for you. God bless you.